In last week's video, I began what was one of the most amazing flights of the entire trip, soaring over the beautiful Rio Grande and over increasingly rocky and remote terrain. In this video, I fly over many incredibly rugged canyons and Big Bend National Park. In the second part of this leg, I continue following the U.S.-Mexico border along the Rio Grande and over terrain that's just about as awesome as the Grand Canyon, just on a smaller scale. A bit stiff and tired, I'm happy to land at Lajitas for a well-earned break and a nice ending to a stunning flight. Cows. Well, no one of them is freaking out. One's running. The other ones were just chilling. There are numerous canyons which tee into the Rio Grande, and this is the list I came up with of canyons along this day's flying. Seminole Canyon, Rattlesnake Canyon, House Canyon, Cold Canyon, Ramsey Canyon, Lozier Canyon, Bear Canyon, Shafter Canyon, Britton Canyon, Jabalina Canyon, Taylor Canyon, Washboard Canyon, Jackson Canyon, Reagan Canyon, Big Canyon, Borland Canyon, Driftwood Canyon, Horse Canyon, Cow Canyon, Boquillas Canyon, Smugglers Canyon, Santa Elena Canyon, Canyon Colorado, Topado Canyon, Las Burras Canyon, Auras Canyon, and El Calabazar Canyon. Does this dude really live here in a mobile home? Seriously? Another mobile home? Or, no, that's, that's a RV and a fifth wheel. Yeah, like, who in the world lives here? Seriously. Like the Grand Canyon for sure. Or like the kind of the outskirts of the Grand Canyon. That's pretty awesome.
this is rugged and remote. Holy crap. No wonder there's no border patrol here. This is ridiculous. It's so rugged and so remote. It is insane. It almost makes me nervous flying over it. There's a house down there. Are you kidding me? Dang. Yeah, if the engine goes out here, I'm landing in the river. Landing land and in the river. Although this video has some mind-blowing scenery, the version which my patrons get to view has over an hour of footage including a greater variety of scenery and some quirky and interesting additional flying. I really want to give my patrons something valuable for their money, so I'll also include long, raw clips on occasion, along with as yet undetermined content. I'm also always striving to improve my video editing. I'm currently experimenting with a new forward-facing camera, the Panasonic BGH-1, as I'm determined to provide the highest quality video possible. That new camera, other cameras, the plane, the travel, and computer equipment all cost a lot. If you want to help contribute, there's a link to my Patreon account in the description below. Oh man, this is just totally awesome. It's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah.
you have for 20 miles, actually, I'm going almost exactly straight here. Just some little curves, but I maybe could fly straight for 20 miles and just let the river zigzag under me. Nice and calm. Super awesome weather today. Wow. Really, really nice. Calm and nice and cool so far this morning. Just so nice. That erosion, the way the erosion is happening on those rocks, or not is happening, but happened. That's pretty awesome looking. Pretty awesome right here. Pretty awesome, to uh, put it mildly. More of those little shacks, and then another house with concrete walls and no roof. We oh, got some rugged peaks over there. This is interesting. Looks like a ridge line that went all the way through here, but then the river cut right through it. That's something. Pretty narrow. I don't think I'd want to fly through it if it was any narrower than this. Well, we got a real road here. Or as I like to call it, a beautiful, beautiful runway. Ranch. That's what the VFR chart says. Is that a church? Are you kidding me? Looks like a church out there. interesting plane right here with boom cliffs right here all right I'm gonna go ahead and switch fuel this one should go another 10 minutes or something but I don't care it's low enough and that's on and that's 
almost completely full. So, I should make it to four hours really easily. Very easily. But, I will have landed at my airport well before that. Look at that. Look at that insane ruggedness ahead. Looks like we're going to fly into uh, the jaws of death here. Holy crap. It should be easy to locate Big Bend National Park on a map because its name actually comes from the Big Bend in the Rio Grande River, a relatively sharp bend in the Texas-Mexico border over in West Texas. Within the park are more than 1,200 species of plants, more than 450 species of birds, 56 species of reptiles, and 75 species of mammals. Quite a powerhouse of nature. You can also raft the river and enjoy beautiful scenic drives through the park. The park contains archaeological sites dating back almost 10,000 years, along with cultural features related to pioneers, ranchers, and miners. Also within the park are sea fossils, dinosaur bones, and volcanic dikes. The Rio Grande runs for about 118 miles through Big Bend National Park, and that's around 12% of the Texas-Mexico border. Something I wondered while flying along the border was where exactly the border was. At certain points, it wasn't clear. According to the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, the park's territory extends only to the center of the deepest river channel as the river flowed in 1848. While that's an interesting tidbit, it certainly wouldn't help the average modern explorer like me. While I did put forth effort to stay over U.S. soil, most of my flight along the border was in the middle of nowhere, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over a corner cut here or there. Alright, let's climb up a little bit. Because it's kind of tight constraints through here, and if there's some gusts or venturi effect or whatever, I don't want to be in there. I mean, it's awesome. It'd be something to be in there, but I need a little bit more of a buffer right now. I want a little bit more of a buffer. Holy crap! Woo! Dang! That is just insane! Man! So completely insane! And we got a little uh, Mexican town here. Teeny tiny. And we got a beautiful, beautiful paved road. No clue what anybody does there. That's tiny.
And the Rio Grande, it's pretty puny here. Pretty puny. Kind of funny. Couple birds up there. One over there. Another one. Yeah, the river is just like, yeah, there's water, it's not dry for sure, but uh, not oppressive here. Man, that is awesome. Dang! Holy crap! This is completely insane. Completely... Completely holy crap. That's what this is. Oh my goodness, that was just... Oh. That was crazy. Whoa! Oh my goodness. Oh. That's it. That was intense. That was intense. Yeah, you would not even know this was the Rio Grande. You would not know this is the border between two countries. Crazy. And here it is. Look how it's tiny here. Oh, well, I see it splits into two pieces. So it's bigger over there. So I wonder where the border is here. Which one's considered the Rio Grande? Big Bad Ranch State Park, a Lobo 1, 2 white Downward Dash 75,500, currently 7 miles to the northwest. Crossing midfield for traffic pattern, low approach only, Big Bad Ranch. I don't know what airport he was talking about. I want to go to 122.9 and what's uh, 119.275. That'll be the weather at Lajitas. Looks like a tributary over there. I or no, is that the one I just flew flew around? Maybe so. Yeah, it whines so much it's hard to tell. I guess it is. Someone to live there. Huh. Maybe so. That 
it's interesting, that big gap in the rocks there in that mountainside. Kind of interesting. A little wire there that crosses the river, maybe to transport stuff across. That is crazy, that big gap. Multiple gaps in that mountainside. Crazy. That is awesome. Castellon. I wonder if that's what that huge thing is. That's crazy. That's awesome. You know, I think I have to fly around that. I'm going to go ahead and climb up to maybe 3,500. We'll see. So I get a better better view. But that thing's crazy. I gotta fly around it. Okay, this thing's gonna be totally awesome. I mean it is it is totally awesome. Yeah, so 33 and we're over the top of it now. We'll do a little circuit around it. But that is super cool. Cerro Castellan, also known as Castellan Peak or Castellan Peak, is a prominent conical mountain in Big Bend National Park. It's one of a series of summits once known as the Carazones Peaks. Cerro Castellan is at an elevation of 3,294 feet and towers more than 1,000 feet above the surrounding terrain. Its geologic origin was via differential erosion, rock which is tougher and more resistant to erosion, wearing away more slowly than the surrounding earth. It reminds me of some of what I saw back up in Utah. It's a high stack of volcanic rocks, including ash, lava, and tuffaceous rocks. Tuff is a type of rock made of volcanic ash ejected from a vent during a volcanic eruption. Coincidentally, there's a nearby canyon named Tuff Canyon. It's impossible to look in any direction here and not see blatant evidence of a constantly changing earth. Myriad kinds of rocks shaped through melting, eroding, and plate movement, paths carved by flowing water, and vegetation or lack thereof based on quantities and locations of that water, and flying over it really makes for a splendid way to take it all in. Maybe we'll just maintain 33 here. Yeah, it's probably around 3,100 maybe. 30, 31, 32. I think it's awesome. And we got a road down there. So that's nice. That thing is just, that's awesome. Man, that, yeah, that thing is totally awesome. Now we're doing a pretty good turn on a point here. That is, that is awesome. So cool. There we go. Now we actually climbed a little bit. Alrighty, continuing. So we're like at 3,000 here. And... So we're in the ballpark. So does the Rio Grande keep going along this ridge line, or does it cut through there? I think it cuts through there. Yeah, it does. I can see that. 
And then once we get around the rest of this ridge line, we'll hang a right, and that'll take us to the airport. From Europe, you have Catholicism, and the Spanish brought Catholicism with great vigor to the New World. This is where many of the Spanish names in the Americas came from. For example, San Francisco, which means St. Francis, or Santa Elena, which means Holy Elena. Born in the 3rd century in the Roman Empire, Santa Elena, during a trip to the Middle East, presumably found the Holy Cross of Jesus, the cross on which he was crucified, along with the two adjacent crosses on which two thieves were crucified. This has been written about by multiple well-known Greek and Latin scholars. If true, that's quite something. Yeah, it's interesting. They go straight up and then it just gradually slopes down this way. This is the Canyon de Santa Elena Flora and Fauna Protection Area, or Canyon of Santa Elena Flora and Fauna Protection Area. It's a protected area for many species of plants and wildlife in the Mexican municipalities of Manuel Benavides and Ojinaga in the state of Chihuahua. Arrowheads, mortars, and paintings from ancient groups of native peoples have also been found in the area. Among the protected species in the area are several types of cacti, along with black bear, the golden eagle, the peregrine falcon, and beaver. Yeah, I would not want to fly through that canyon right there. Dang. Coming up on 4,000 here. Still not hearing any weather. And... Uh, no right-hand pattern, so both, both runways use a standard pattern. So there's 4,100, so I'll just stay here. And that puts me 500 feet above pattern altitude. So, should be maybe in that valley right across that ridge line there. I'll see it in a little bit here once I turn away. I think uh, maybe I'll fly over this town. And that maybe that town is Lajitas. Probably so. Yeah, there's no weather here. No weather going on. All right, 122.9. Yeah, there it is. There's the runway. Yeah, the river's not not huge right here. Yeah, it's fine. Lajitas traffic, Luscombe, 1813 Kilo, over the border uh, to the southwest. And I'm at 4,100. I'm going to overfly the field at 4,100, take a look at the windsock, and then I'll descend to pattern altitude for landing Lajitas. You know, that's a welcome sight right now. Get out, stretch my knees, walk around a little bit, get gas. I really am going to be happy to get gas. So I have to have fuel. Uh, if not, I should have enough to get I have enough to get to my destination, Presidio. But um, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather top this guy up. Yeah, their weather, their AWOS isn't working. One nineteen, two seven five. Yeah, one nineteen, two seven five. One nineteen. Yeah. Nope. Oh. 
122.9, alright. Lajitas traffic, Luscum 1813 Kilo, orbiting the field at 4100, Lajitas. Nice looking runway. 6,500 feet long. That ought to do the trick. One plane parked down there. Oil pressure's good, oil temp's good, but it's a little warmer. The oil temperature's coming up. I think the I think the air is heating up. It's a nice looking airport. Looking for a segmented circle or a windsock or... So I'm going 90 over the ground, so I'm guessing I'm going to land 2-5. So 90, 91 over the ground, and I just throttle back a little bit. And if there's a windsock, oh look at that, the taxiway used to be the runway. Huh, what do you know? That's funny. So they expanded it, so they don't have to taxi back over a mile. Huh. Interesting. So, they spent tons of money on a super duper awesome brand new runway, but There's no windsock, and I'm going 89 over the ground. So really, there's not much of a difference. Oh, there's a windsock. All right, it's tiny. Yeah, the windsock looks limp, so. Actually, Looks like there might be a tiny bit of wind from that way. All right. Late this traffic, Luscum 1813. Kilo's gonna maneuver for a teardrop for a 45 for a left downwind for runway seven, Lajitas. All right, so 26 is the field elevation. So I'll come down to 36 from, well, I'm at 39 right now. There, I'm at 36. I hate this traffic, Luscum 1813 kilos on a 45 for a left downwind for runway 7. I hate this. Now let's just go ahead and pull the car beat on. And I haven't heard anybody here, so. I hate this traffic, Luscum 1813 kilos, left downwind, runway 7. I hate this. Maybe a little bit far away there, but not bad. I could e easily land. Yeah, they're doing some uh, work there off the end of that taxiway. Lajitas traffic, Luscum 1813 Kilo, 
left base, runway 7, let this. I haven't heard anybody. Don't see anybody on straight in final there. Lahitas traffic lost come 1813 kilo final, runway 7, Lahitas. You'd think they'd have like some taxiways over there. We're just gonna have to back taxi on seven here. Lajitas traffic less come one eight one three kilo back taxi and runway seven Lajitas. We can taxi across the gravel there, but Ooh, oh, it's nice to be down. Holy crap. Three hours and twenty three minutes. That's enough, and it's not like it was just low intensity or something on cruise control on autopilot. Oh, good grief, man. That's a nice looking uh, place they got there. Looks like a hotel or something. place looks totally awesome, man. Looks like a hotel. They got an underground tank or something? No tanks above ground. No. There must be tanks underground or something. So, I was very relieved to get on the ground at Lajitas. It's a resort, which I did not know. It's a golf resort, and the whole town, uh, the functionality and the, the purpose of the town is all about the resort. Um, anyway, 
it took me a lot longer, more flying to get here than I thought because I followed the river pretty closely the whole way and uh, ended up being almost three and a half hours of flying, 326. So I was very happy to be on the ground here and I topped off, topped off one tank and now I'll fly to Big Bend and then to Presidio. So this is very quiet and really nice. Uh, the airport manager is a cool guy and he's been the manager here for a couple years and worked at the resort before that. The resort actually owns the airport and everything else around here I guess. So anyway, glad to have fuel and get out and stretch a little bit. So now off to Big Bend and then Presidio. Come back next week when I complete my third day of flying along the U.S.-Mexico border, arriving in Presidio, Texas, where I'll cross over into Ojinaga, Mexico for a couple nights.